All right, so we're almost finished here. Just a few more people of Mesopotamia. Um, we basically finished talking about the Israelites in the last video, but um, one other thing I wanted to mention just re with regard to the two different kingdoms of Israel. Um, so the northern kingdom, as you can see here on the map, is the kingdom of Israel, right? That's going to be conquered by the Assyrians in 722 BC. BCE and actually a lot of people in this area are going to be forced to leave and I think I was saying earlier a lot of them well some of them the ones that remain are essentially going to become Palestinians others are going to maintain their Jewish identity and eventually once uh, they can return to the southern uh, Israelite kingdom or the kingdom of Judah they can um, sort of bring back uh, their Jewish traditions but in general it was actually the southern part of the kingdom of Israel right the um of the kingdom of Judah um, that was conquered by the Neo-Babylonians in 586 BC. They tended to maintain more of their Jewish and Hebrew traditions and again they returned to uh, Judah um, after, um, after the Neo-Babylonian Empire fell and uh, this is really where we see kind of the, the origins of the strong traditions of, uh, of Judaism and the Hebrew language. All right, so let's move on to the Phoenicians, I believe. You know, this is the last slide, hooray. So again, we talked about the Phoenicians quite a bit in class. Um, what really distinguishes, the, well, there are a few things. Um, one, of course, is the development of their uh, alphabetic language, which is, in some ways, a loose ancestor of the Greek and later the Latin alphabet. And again, I say loose uh, because it's, you know, as, as we look at this, uh, surely there are some similarities, right? This is the Phoenician uh, letter that represents the A sound. There's our classical A, right? You see some similarities, but at the same time, it would be far-fetched to say that it's a direct sort of um, precedent to our alphabet. But anyway, um, of course, if we look back at cuneiform and think about the difference, the Phoenician languages are um, phonetic, even though the word phonetic, as we talked about in class, is not spelled phonetically. But anyway, besides the point, uh, the idea is that every letter represents a sound. So the Phoenician alphabet is, uh, has far fewer characters um, than something like cuneiform. So it actually makes it so that the language can spread very quickly. Uh, it makes it so that the language can be learned relatively easily, which shows us why the Phoenicians had such extensive trading networks, right? They reached as far as, actually, they went beyond the Strait of Gibraltar. So they basically um, visited all of North Africa along the Mediterranean Sea. They also visited uh, these... Um, southern Spain. They ended up uh, in some of the islands here in the Caribbean, uh, and uh, through Italy, right? They essentially, uh, in a lot of ways, they were the they were the traders of the Mediterranean region. Um, with that said, the Phoenicians um, did not have a very strong agricultural society. There was a reason why they were so um, oriented on water, right? They uh, did not really have the best land. Uh, it was not as conducive to farming. As far as their land is concerned, we're talking approximately present-day Lebanon. All right, so you kind of see just a little chunk. The Phoenician kingdom was quite small geographically as well. Um, oh, and I just caught a little typo in this. Some of the typos I can deal with, but this one I can't. So forgive me while I actually edit it live. But that is so bad. I cannot say that they develop and I spelled alphabet that wrong. I totally cannot get away with saying that it's cuneiform because it's not. All right, so notice the Phoenician alphabet develops in approximately 2000 BCE, which is about a thousand years after cuneiform. Um, so I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Really, I think that that's it. Um, that comprises the, the majority of chapter two with regard to the um, Indus river valley civilizations. I'm going to tack that on to our discussion about Asia. So there is some discussion about the um, sort of Indo-European migrations, but I'm just going to leave that all to a chapter two discussion. So those will be the next videos up. Um, again, any questions, by all means, if you're one of my students, ask in class. Otherwise, if you're not one of my students and you find these helpful for AP World, uh, please like and subscribe. Thanks.